So we are taking a look at the insides of the DM2 Confi S. This is a new version of the Confi with, with a better optical sensor. And now we are going to take a look at each individual component and how the PCB is laid out and what makes this mouse work as good as it does. Now, first of all, let's remove the obvious out of the way. Here is the PWM Pickstart sensor. This is a 3360 sensor. I'm going to label it here. This is one of the best sensors that is available right now. And it's a joy to work with small LOD lift of distance, accurate on multiple surfaces. Now we are going to look at the front of the mouse. Uh, we have right here, this is the left click and then the right click, right? And these guys right here are part of the Omron series. Very good switches. These are the D2FC7N, quite a popular switch, great tactile feedback. We have them both here because some mice, pardon me, some mice have only one switch made by Omron and the other one is made by someone else, which of course is not good, very good because it's, it creates a difference in terms of tactile feedback. So then we have the encoder right here. This is the encoder. I'm going to label it right here. This is a TCC encoder, basically. In terms of actual uh, tracking of the motions of the scroll wheel, there is a small difference between a TCC encoder and something one step above it. And the price differences between a mouse with a TCC encoder and a mouse without a TCC encoder, it can get noticeable in terms of you know actual production costs for the company and then that is reflected in the price of, of the mouse. So a TCC encoder, it's, it's normal. Uh, then we have the switch which is back here but you cannot see it because it's, it's um, the, the photo has been taken at a, at a slight angle so it's right here and I'm going to, going to edit the photo in right now and here is the uh, mouse wheel switch. This is of course a TCC switch as well. Could have been an Ombron, could have been a Huano switch. They used a TCC switch. Again, it's good enough for what it is. Uh, it could have been an Ombron as well. This would have been made a difference if it was an Ombron, but it isn't. Uh, it's not a bad switch in any way, it's just okay. We have the main processing unit right here. This is the uh, where the memory is stored, where pre-installed profiles are stored, you know. Everything that you set up on this mouse, it's stored in that main processing unit. And this is a Holtec unit, HD68FB560. This is like one of the most used Holtec MCUs. I have seen these things in, in Zoe's, in other Dream Machines mice, in pretty much every good mouse that was taken apart at some point, they usually have a Holtec unit and most of the time it has to be the FB560. It's good. That's that's all I can say about it. And of course, this right here is the cable socket because most of the newer, if not all the Dream Machine mice have a removable cable. So basically you can replace the cable. This detaches up upwards, right? It goes like upwards and you can, you can change the cable, no issues whatsoever. This is a very good thing this is not soldered in it's just a socket it's anyone can do it it's a great feature then we have these things right here these are the side button switches and the profile dpi switches uh i could not find the actual model numbers for these uh i have no idea what actually they are they look to be generic one-os even though the logos the logo here differs from the logo there so at this point i i, I will have to say that these are generic switches they are good for what they are generally because uh, these guys here are doing the profile switching and the DPI switching and the lower part here, they, they, these are the side buttons. Uh, using lower quality switches for this side of the mouse is a way to cut production costs and thus making the mouse a bit cheaper for everyone because let's be honest, the important thing is right at the front when you have Omron switches and TCC encoders. That's how you do a mouse that is good, but that is also affordable for everyone. So this is how you do it. You know, There is no point in having Omron switches everywhere and high-end encoders and whatever, and then you have a mouse that is like 150 euros or something. And then you, of, of course, you don't have sales for it because it's too expensive. And now we move closer. This is the Holtec unit. And uh, then we have the Pixart. PW3360, this is the sensor itself. So this is a cap, this is a little electrolytic cap right here because this has to be explained. Some people asked me about this and these guys right here are SMDs or surface mounted resistors. And you can see, this is basically control the, the voltages between components and you know everything. You can see that it has a 103 here. This is 103, this is a model number. And in this case, this guy right here is rated at 10,000 ohms. That's the resistance that it has, it's 10,000 ohms. Um, and here you have a different one. 
Does it matter in the long run to have 10,000 ohm resistors or smaller or bigger? It really depends on what they are connecting to, uh, but I wouldn't stress about this because these are just controlling the, the resistance uh, on the various circuits and everything and it just doesn't matter that much. It, it would matter, uh, for example, that you have one resistor or a smaller resistor on the same level as if you have an ohm run switch for the left click and then a Chinese uh, low end, you know, no name switch on the right click. That's a difference. Having a 10k ohm SMD or a 5k ohm SMD is not going to make that much of a difference anyway. You can see here, this right here, this is labeled as CON2. That, this is the connector 2. Why? It's basically the same deal as this guy, right? And this is, so this is the connector one, right? What's happened is this is PCB has been reused before. This is the same sort of PCB as the DM3 machines, DM1 Pro S and FPS and whatever. Some of these mice have the connector for the cable in this position. So basically what they do is they ordered the PCB made with two spots for the connectors. This mouse gets the connector here and another mouse gets the connector there. It's just that simple. It doesn't, it's nothing, nothing out of the usual. And then we have the LEDs. It has two LEDs. One of them is here and the other one is right about here. And uh, as you can see, these are not flush to the case. These are actually upright. Basically why they do this type of thing is very simple. It saves on the manufacturing costs to not have someone place the uh, LEDs flush on the case. Plus, as you can see, it's bent slightly towards the front of the case to have better lightning. Over here, you, you see various SMDs. And this is basically how the DM3 Martians DM2 Comfy Ace is made. It doesn't, you don't have to make something overly complex to make it, make it good. You just have to have good components, a simple setup, and these guys nailed it. With the, most of their mice are very good because they actually do not need a software for, it, for them. They can just work like that. That's why you have a Holtec unit. This has pre-installed profiles in it. Please let me know if this video was useful to you into gathering more info about this mouse and if you want to see more gaming mice being disassembled and analyzed by me.